Well, I am afraid to say that the allegations about me are true. I am a Disney adult. I tried to hide it, but I think my new series, which you can watch on youtube.com slash droopy, every Disney Parks movie reviewed, I think has really been the nail in the coffin for my Disney adultdom. What doesn't help either, <laughs> I'm actually going at the time of this recording to Disney World for the first time in five years. At the time of this recording, I'll be going in three weeks. So I'm very excited to go. I love theme parks and I love roller coasters and I love <laughs> I loved themed entertainment. I'm kind of boring and kind of a normie when it comes to that. Like I will spend upwards of thousands of dollars to go to Orlando, Florida and ride rides and get sunburnt, you know, and fight with a mom in line. Hopefully that doesn't happen this time. So I thought it would be fun to do sort of a um, tier list for all of the rides, at least a good portion of them. I found a tier list on tiermaker.com that I thought was pretty interesting and and I made my own categories. I, I'm really excited to kind of rank the rides because I have this ranking in my head. And I know tier ranking is more just grouping things, but it's still going to be interesting to see where I end up putting rides and things like that. There's some rides that have just opened that I haven't been on and that has its own category. Let's get into the tier list. I have set up a couple of different categories that I think will hopefully make sense to you. I kind of just created categories based on how long I would wait for these rides. And I feel like how long you're willing to wait for a ride kind of tells you what you think the quality is and will hopefully tell you what I think the quality of that ride is, right? So with that said, let's get into the categories that I have here. There's going to be a whole category of I haven't been on yet. And then there's another category where I haven't been on, won't go on. So haven't been on yet. It's going to be the newer rides or just things I didn't have time to get to, I guess, in my past few trips that I'm intending to do on my trip here coming up in three weeks. And then there's a haven't been on, won't go on ride list that is pretty self-explanatory. I don't really, there's there's certain things you just kind of walk past. And it's nice, I guess, for older people or people who can go to the parks a lot more, but it's just not for me. I'm there to do like the bigger stuff. Enough talking. Let's just go through and put these into groups. First category, will wait ungodly amounts of time. It's that good. So this is the ride where if you see a three or four hour wait, even though you know that you shouldn't be waiting that long for it, you're kind of like, hmm, it might be worth it. <laughs> we'll wait an hour to 90 minutes. So this is a ride that's pretty popular in the park, probably popular with me. And it's a ride that, you know, I if the line is fun and the, the ride is fun enough, I'll wait up to an hour and a half for it. And then you have the 25 to 45 minute wait. So it is just below where maybe you wouldn't wait an hour. But if somebody's like, oh, this ride's 45 minutes, you're like, okay, that's not bad. And then we'll ride if the line is short. That one's going to be your 20 minutes or less probably rides, you know, kind of the things to fill in the gap or you've done everything else in the new land or whatever. Haven't been on yet. These are rides that I just haven't gotten around to yet or they opened after the last time I went to. Disney World that I do intend to ride. Haven't been on, won't go on. Uh, those are rides that I have no intention on going ever. Same thing with No Thanks, where I, I'm just not going to go do these rides, but these ones, like, No Thanks, I've done, but I just won't do it again because I don't enjoy that. Haven't been on, won't go on, just no interest. I've already done my research. I don't, I'm good. So, with that said, I believe this is the American Adventure. No Thanks. I've done the American Adventure. I think I did it when I was like eight years old. And it's cool, but when you're in the World Showcase and you have, I don't know how many other countries there are, you know, you literally can, I live in America 100% of the time, right? I don't need to go do the American Pavilion. I already get that <laughs> every day, you know, and I, I obviously I want to travel the world and stuff too. Like, I'm not going to just stay here and think that Epcot is my world travel. Why not use that to your advantage? Alien Swirling Saucers haven't been on yet. I actually had a fast pass. I went, my whole thing about going to Disney World in five years, not being there in five years, I actually went to Hollywood Studios for a day last year because we wanted to do the Star Wars stuff. So I have been to a part of Disney World. I just haven't done the whole four-day thing. And so I, I, the idea is when I, you know, I'm going to do a pickup on this video, hopefully future me will come back. And then some of these rides that are, haven't been on yet, uh, I'll have an update and be able to put them somewhere. Alien Swirling Saucers is one of those ones I had a fast pass for. I had Genie Plus, whatever, Lightning Lane for. And I decided not to do it so I could go on Rise of the Resistance one more time, which I think ended up being uh, the better option. I mean, it's... <laughs> 
either get swirled around, you know, you know, and children are screaming or in rise of the resistance, you can, I don't know, run away from Kylo Ren and also hear children screaming. So it's really, you know, you're at a loss either way, but I just would choose the highly themed ride over the swirling saucers. Astro Ar- Orbiter, uh, haven't been on, won't go on. I don't know. I, it's like a futuristic Dumbo. I've been on Dumbo. Don't really need to do it. <laughs> it's really cool that you actually, you know, you go up on like the second level of Tomorrowland. That ride has never interested me. And also too, I think the line is because of how little land there is around it. Like the line is basically like just on the concrete, like in the hot concrete. Awesome planet. Haven't been on, won't go on. Uh, Barnstormer. That is a will ride if the line is short. I actually have a deep affinity for that ride. It's a very short roller coaster and it's definitely a roller coaster for kids. But that was my first roller coaster at Disney. Animal Kingdom was our first day at the parks when we went in 2008. And then the second day was Magic Kingdom, I believe. And Barnstormer was my first roller coaster. We didn't go on Everest because that was a little bit too crazy. Uh, for us at the time. I still think it's really fun. It's, it's really made for kids. It's not anything that I go out of my way to do. But I remember going there in 2017 with my brother. And so we went back around six or seven and we went on a bunch of rides. And by the end of the night, the Barnstormer had like, the weight was literally just walking through the line. And so we went on that like a couple of different times. Kenny and the Beast, haven't been on, won't go on. That's a stage show at Hollywood Studios. There's just better stuff to do. And then Big Thunder Mountain is, will wait ungodly amounts of time. It's that good. Big Thunder Mountain is so fun. I have nothing but smiles on my face when I go on that ride. It is so inventive and detailed for a ride that is literally just about being in a canyon. And there are so many near misses. It's honestly more thrilling to me than most, you know, loop-de-loop roller coasters because there's a ton of near misses, right? Like there's moments where you're going down the hill. You feel like your head's going to get chopped off. Something about that just screams fun to me. I don't know why. It's tough to be a bug. It's going in no thanks. I did that when I was a kid and I think it's closing soon. Thank God, because that ride or that attraction is horrifying and I do not need that fear in my life. I already have fear every day. All right, next few... Canada Far and Wide, which is the Circle Vision show. Carousel in progress. Country Bear Jamboree. Uh, Circle Vision and Country Bear Jamboree are are going and haven't been on, won't go on. And then Carousel of Progress is will ride if line is short. For Carousel of Progress, it's really if it's raining and everything else is closed, I'll go do it. Um, Circle Vision, I haven't seen. I don't really have any interest for it. I know people say it's good, but again, like there's just other stuff I'd rather do at the park. And Country Bear Jamboree is just stupid. Uh, Dinosaur, I really, really want to put up. We'll wait ungodly amounts of time. It's that good because I do have a deep affinity for it, but I think I'm going to drop it to we'll wait an hour to 90 minutes. If it's going to be an hour for Dinosaur, it probably means the Avatar stuff and Everest is probably two, three, four hours um, because that's kind of how that park goes because they don't have that many rides. I don't think a lot, you know, you don't really ever have to wait that long, but I would wait that long for now, you know, an hour for it, especially because it's closing soon. Uh, At least that's what the rumors, that's what the streets are saying, if you believe in the streets. So I, when I'm my next trip, I'm going to try and ride it like two or three times. I I love Dinosaur and I'm sad to see it go, but I'm not going to wait two or three hours for it. But if it's an hour, happily. Dumbo, I will ride that if the line is short, another kid's ride. It'd be weird for a grown man to go on that. I'm going on this trip by myself. I'm 23 and I feel like it'd be really, really weird if I did that by myself. Enchanted Tales, haven't been on, won't go on. I think that's a character meet and greet. No, No chance I do that. I think this is enchant this is uh the tiki room i have been on it don't need to do it again it's kind of it feels very very old which is a lot of the things that disney feel old and they have a lot of history but i just no interest in doing that again expedition everest i will wait a long time for expedition everest i didn't actually go on expedition everest until i was in my senior year of high school when i went with my choir and i just found i mean i always knew i would love it that ride is impeccable and it's it's crazy how good it is it's crazy how good the bones of it are even with the yeti not working festival of the lion king haven't been on won't go on just no interest i don't have an interest in a lot of the shows that happen just because i like going to disney for the rides journey into imagination with figment it's pretty much it's a pretty good eyesore like pretty bad eyesore and it's it's a shame because i've seen videos of what the original rye looked like and now it is very much just this frankenstein frankenstein's monster but i still love it and i still have an affinity for it and me and my me and my buddy actually have a running joke we had a running joke on our choir trip about getting everybody really excited for this ride that just isn't very good we kept talking it up like it was rise of the resistance or tower of terror where we're like dude figment's the best ride ever like oh my god and then we went on it and we got stuck within like a minute 
of being on it. We got stuck for like 20 minutes. <laughs> Once again, Finding Nemo, haven't been on, won't go on. Flight of Passage, this is gonna probably be my most controversial take, but I will only wait an hour to 90 minutes for it. I think we waited just under two hours for it, which is actually pretty good because we were there during spring break. Flight of Passage is really cool and it's really innovative. And it's cool that you feel like you're actually on the Banshee and everything with the, th with the vehicle you're sitting on. The line I think is a little bit more interesting just because you're going through the forests of the Navi's plan and everything. I, you know, it's one of those things where it's just you're you're sitting there and you're watching a screen and the screen is really high def and the 3d is pretty good and you're moving right so there's that aspect to it and it's very innovative and cool but it just doesn't do as much for me as real physical places the line does a lot better for me because it's all it's mostly physical and you get to see see a real avatar and everything i won't wait longer than 90 minutes two hours for it uh frozen never after is a 25 to 45 minute wait for me i really really like the maelstrom ride that was there and i thought that it was cool that it was this original you know country <laughs> ride basically about norway's history and everything and i do like the frozen ride but even i the japan version is so much better and it's not even open yet on a mansion i will wait a long time for that ride is so like that is it, it, it's so quintessentially Disney impressions de France uh haven't been on won't go on Indiana Jones stunt spectacular I will wait 25 minutes to 45 minutes I will wait a long time for it but it is so dependent on how good your the people that you're on the ride with and that your tour guide you know you can have some some tour guides that are just really really phoning it in Kelly River Rapids or Kali I'm not ever sure on that one that's a 25 to 45 minute wait when you're, I'm not really a big get soaked person at, at theme parks, but in Florida, when it's super hot, you know, I'm going in June, so it's going to be absolutely, you know, hell on earth there. I'm sure the way Cali Rap is very refreshing and it's, it's fun. It's a huge safari and it takes up a good chunk of the park and you get to see live animal uh, monsters Inc. laugh floor. We'll ride if the line is short. That's a show. Um, you know, it's like, turtle talk with crush where they have you know pre-rendered animations and then they have you know people acting those out in the back and everything so it's really fun it's um it's one of those things though like you're basically just waiting for the previous show to get let out to go in there i would never wait that long uh lightning mcqueen racing academy is going and haven't been on won't go on no interest ariel ride um i think it's like the journey of the little mermaid um i'm between no thanks and will ride if the line is short um, I think I'm going to do, if, we'll, if we'll ride if the line is short, cause I end up doing it almost every time that I'm there. It's cute. It's there's something jarring about some of the animatronics in that ride and it's just slow and kind of boring, you know? Um, but it's, it, it also is a little bit cute and it's, the line is really cool. Cause you end up going to this cave underneath, you know, and you go by this waterfall and I enjoy that kind of stuff. Living with the land. I want to put it, we'll wait an hour, but I know I should put in 25 to 45 minutes. I am a living with the land truther. I love that ride. I go on it every time I'm at Epcot. It's so relaxing. It's a long ride. You get to go through so many cool parts of the land. You get to see all of the vegetables that, you know, Disney grows throughout the year. It's, it's very, very cute. There's a lot of cool, little different uh scenes you go through and then you get this whole like kind of backstage tour of epcot and it's it's just really really well done uh teacups haven't been on won't go on um i don't like getting dizzy magic carpets of aladdin just kind of a it's dumbo but just stupider when the poo is will ride if the line is short that's a very cute ride and i very much enjoy that a uh, toy story mania is 25 to 45 minutes possibly an hour i'll move that to an hour to 90 minutes because it's a fun ride especially if you're with your friends or your family and it's a nice competition you, your arm gets super tired pro tip if you've already been on it uh just you know skip the practice round because your arm and your wrist is gonna get super tired but it's fun it has this kind of zany sort of energy to it um it's got a lot of just good energy in general and um you know, it was a po really, really popular ride at Hollywood Studios for a long, long time. It still is, but, um, you know, now that they've opened up the Toy Story land, it's, 
I think it's a little bit less popular, but it is right across from Slinky Dog, which is also a really, really fun ride. I don't know. It, it's 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 a fun thing to do with your your family, and it's it gets you out of the heat too. It's AC in there and everything. Uh, Mission Space haven't been on, won't go on. Muppet Vision will ride if line is short. There's another one of those things where the ride is never the line is never that short because you're just waiting for the show beforehand uh, to get out. Um, but I love Muppet Vision 3D, and if Disney ever removes it, I am done with them. Just kidding. I'll probably go back. Navi River Journey. That one is a 25 to 45 minute wait. I have been on it. We got a fast pass for it. So we got in there pretty quick. It's way too short to just justify the lines that it typically has. It This Navi River Journey will typically have lines that are about or just about as long as a flight of passage. And it's just a boat ride. And it's really relaxing. Don't get me wrong. But it's like a four minute boat ride where nothing happens. And, you know, the shaman just sings. And so. It does not justify the wait time at all. You either need to have like this really exciting ride that, you know, is thrilling and everything. If you're going to get 90 plus minute waits, or you need to have a ride that is already like 20 minutes long, like a Pirates of the Caribbean. People Mover, 25 to 45 minute wait. So I, I think People Mover is like an S tier attraction, but I think if you're waiting longer than an hour for it, it kind of defeats the purpose of the People Mover. The People Mover is never supposed to have like a line longer than 10 minutes um and sometimes you know with the way that the parks work and genie plus works and everything it does have an insanely long amount of wait i guess um but i will wait a while for it if it's not over an hour just it's not worth the hour uh trip peter pan's flight that is a 25 to 45 minute wait for me i've been on it a lot when i was a kid and it's not updated really and i like thrills you know or just really 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 detailed rides and it's detailed enough and everything but i think the appeal is just kind of i've gotten over it of the year as the years have gone by and this this ride also too part of it that i'm factoring into it is it has you know two hour plus waits whenever you're there because everybody wants to fly you know, with their kids and everything. Um, it's still a great ride. I don't, I hope I don't get any Peter Pan haters, but it's just not worth the wait for me. Philhar Magic is all, that's a 25 to 45 minute wait, which is weird. I mean, it's another show. So it's like, you're just waiting for the other show to get out. But I love this show so much. I think it's amazingly well done. And just, it's cool how they update it periodically um, with new, with new rides and new, or new, uh, with new songs and everything. I will wait a long time for that. I, I love, I, I make sure that I do fill hard magic every time I'm there. Pirates of the Caribbean is, will wait an hour to 90 minutes. This is a, a wait that normally doesn't happen. It usually doesn't get over an hour, but I will wait an hour or so for it because it is another quintessential Disney experience when you're at the parks. And it's a long ride. It's about nine minutes. And there's actually a little bit of a thrill in there. And it's really well detailed and really cool scenes. And it's just iconic. So always have to make sure that I do it. Uh, the Disney Pixar short film vessel. No thanks. Haven't been on it. China movie. Sorry. No thank you. The carousel. Haven't been on. Won't go on. I've been on a carousel before. Uh, Rise of the Resistance is I will wait forever. Rise of the Resistance is like a 15 minute experience. If you've been on it, you know what I'm talking about. It's one of those things. If you haven't been on it, you have to wait. You just have to wait however long the line is because it is one of the most incredible experiences that I've ever had. People give Disney a lot of shit, you know, for uh, the quality of their product you know, over the years. And I think it's fair in some cases, but Rise of the Resistance, they went all out for, and I wish we got more of that instead of new buses. Rock and roller coaster, no thanks. To, I don't, I get claustrophobic on rides, which I don't know if I've ever really, I haven't talked about this on this channel because why would I? I haven't talked about rides really. Uh, but whenever there's like an over the shoulder kind of contraption, you know, uh, which I know like those are, those are to keep you safe, but I just start to freak out on them. And I start to think about like, Oh, what if, what if, uh, what if this ride breaks down and we're stuck upside down or we just have to sit here for, well, if we're stuck upside down, I guess it would come in handy having the over the shoulder restraints. But if we're just, you know, if you break down, you're just sitting there, you know, it starts to feel, it starts to feel like you're, um, you know, you're trapped. Like <laughs> I just, I, I, I freak out a little bit. So I try not to do those rides. Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway is 25 to 45 minutes for me. It is a good ride. It replaced one of my favorites in the great movie ride. It's cute and it's fun, but 
it is not worth the weights that it gets for me. There's not really a thrill. It's super projection heavy. It's loud. Like it's really, really loud. And I, that's the same thing with dinosaur, but it's just, sometimes it's just a lot. It's just, it feels very juvenile sometimes, which is fine. You're at a theme park with, you know, families and stuff, but it's just something that I don't need to wait that long for. I'll go on it if it's less than an hour. The Seas with Nemo and Friends, that is going to be, we'll ride at the line short. It's cool to look into, you know, the, the tanks of water they have, which like this ride does, but you're just in the seashell and you're just watching scenes from the movie, basically. Seven Dwarves, 25 to 45 minute wait. I've been on this ride once. We somehow got on there in about 40 minutes. This was the same trip, you know, the 2017 trip where the the parks were open late and you could just go, you know, the whole, all the families would clear out by eight. And so every ride had a super short wait and somehow Seven Dwarves had 40 minutes. This, this ride usually has like a two to three hour wait and it's fun, but it's not as thrilling as it should be. And it's not as, it's not long like Big Thunder Mountain and it's not, it's not as detailed. There's some show scenes and everything. It's cool that the, you know, your cart like bounces and everything, but it's just too short for me. It's just, it's not worth it. Uh, Slinky Dog is, will wait an hour to 90 minutes, which I, I've done, I think twice I have waited for it for about 90 minutes and it was worth it both times just because it is, it's really fun. Like, and it's, it's weirdly thrilling for a ride that is kind of babyish and it's very cute. It's a very cute ride. There's a whole, whole part where you start to slink back like you're a slinky dog, right? And then you, you race forward and everything and you start to bounce and everything. Super cute, super fun. We'll wait a while for it. It typically is a two-hour wait. I don't know if I would do that, but 90 minutes seems fair. It's a small world. No thanks. I, it's a classic ride, but the song is annoying as shit. Uh, Soren, 25 to 45 minute wait. Super relaxing, super fun. Soaring around the world now. Used to be soaring around California. I enjoy it a lot, and I'm a big fan of it, but I just don't think it's worth more than an hour. The line is never that long. It's usually never over 45, 50 minutes. It's it's worth a 50 minute wait, I think, but for, for some reason, an hour, I just, I can't justify it. Space Mountain will wait an hour and 90 minutes. I'm not a big Space Mountain fan, honestly. It's a little too much for me just because it's so dark in there. I'm usually scared of like getting my, getting my arm chopped off. It is fun. It is, it is fun and I get the whole appeal of it, but I like Big Thunder Mountain a lot more because I think Big, Big Thunder Mountain does a lot more with the space and you know, with details and everything. And I think it's a little bit more of a thrilling roller coaster. Plus you can see stuff too. So you actually know, like if your head is like getting cl close to getting hit or not, I guess, I don't know. I guess I just like to know what's coming. Buzz Lightyear, Space Ranger Spin, 25 to 45 minutes, just a fun ride to go on with your friend or your family and shoot bad guys and stuff. But it's a little dated. It, it looks like it came out of the nineties and the guns don't work that well. And you can't even pick them up like you can in Disneyland. So Earth, 25 to 45 minutes. It's pretty slow moving and it can be a little boring, I guess, for young kids, but it's cool that you get to go into the Epcot ball, who is the hottest girl in school after all. So I'm definitely down to do it. Splash Mountain's here. If Splash Mountain was still around, it would go at the top. I'm very excited for Tiana's. Make this Tiana's, I guess, um, in my head and just put it in. I haven't been on yet because Tiana's is not open. Star Tours. Star Tours is a hour wait for me because the ride changes. You never know what you're going to get. Um, it's a Star Wars ride. It's really fun. It is a similar simulator ride that doesn't really make me that sick. And again, like it just the you never know what planet you're going to go to, what characters you're going to see. It's a greatest hits jukebox sort of Star Wars ride. And I very, very much enjoy it. This Family Robinson. Uh, it's kind of just a walkthrough thing. I'll ride it if the, or I'll walk through it if the line is short. Test track is we'll wait an hour and 90 minutes. This is a ride, though, that. You don't ever have to do that, really, because you can just take take the single rider line. But this is one of the most thrilling rides in the whole resort. You go to like 65 miles per hour, and it just feels so fast, and it, it's so fun. That's another ride that's supposedly closing down soon to get renovated. and It will come back. It will just be refreshed and test track 3.0. So that's another ride I'm planning on riding a whole lot. Marland Speedway, no thanks. That ride smells like your dad's lawnmower. Tower of Terror will wait an ungodly amount of time or it's that good. Tower of Terror is probably my favorite ride ever. It is probably the greatest ride in the history of anything ever. And I've talked about this in the Tower of Terror movie review that I just did, but it is so innovative and fun and freaky and spooky. And it is a perfect, perfect ride. Triceratops Spin, no, haven't been on yet but also won't go on. Uh, Turtle Talk with Crush. I probably won't do that ever again, but it is cute and I would not mind doing it. Bird Show, haven't been on, haven't been to, won't go. Birds are scary. Voyage of the Little Mermaid, I don't think it exists anymore, so haven't been on, won't go on. 
works for that. Uh, One Man's Dream will do if the line is short. I just like, I like museums. I like walking through and seeing things. So if it's a busy day or I'm waiting for my fast pass or whatever, and I just need a, a break. I'll go and check out some of the cool exhibits that they have in there. Not been on Remy's and then have not been on Guardians of the Galaxy. And that is a ride that I desperately want to go on. And then I don't know why Tron's not in here either, but I had, I want to go on Tron too. So yeah, so there is my final tier ranking. Not my final tier ranking, but here's my final tier ranking for right now. I guess I will throw it to future Andrew. Let's see uh, if you were able to get on any of those rides you want to get on. Thank you, past Andrew. Appreciate it. I am now back from my Walt Disney World experience, TM, in the year 2024, <laughs> uh, which makes me sound like an influencer. I'm now back, and so I went on a couple rides that I didn't get to go on before I did the tier list, and now I've been on them, so I can finally kind of talk about them and add them to the list. My list got lost, and I didn't feel like going through all <laughs> 50 hundred i don't know attractions that uh the resort has so i just i made basically an approximate tier um rank list whatever of everything that i had left and you know i i, I the categories are pretty much the same um, i made the categories the same and everything close to it but just you know, it works for the rides that I had left, so um, it's not completely the same as before, but again, I just didn't feel like going through all of that. It's because I was kind of pissed that they made me make an account, and then they immediately lost the tier list that I made. So anyway, I'm now back. I'm here to talk about the new rides that I went on and put them into a list and tell you my thoughts. So definitively, I can say that Alien Swirling Saucers uh, has moved to a no thanks. I've basically just decided that I'm never going to go on that. I don't care about how long the wait is. I've watched it now for five years. Ever, you know, it opened in 2018. I went in 2019 after it opened for the first time, and I've gone to the park. I've gone to Hollywood Studios now twice since then, and I would rather just wait for other stuff. It doesn't even look like you get that dizzy. I just would rather spend the time in the line for Tower of Terror or something. Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, I would wait 30 to 45 minutes for. It's very cute. I ended up waiting 80, I think, because I rope dropped it in early entry, and it I think it broke down, so I don't know how accurate the 80-minute wait was. Or somewhere around there. It might have been closer to 70. I can't remember now. It's been almost a week. But it's very cute, but there's just really no thrill to it. And there's just a lot of screens. Like, the best stuff is in the beginning when you're going through the kitchen refrigerators and everything is larger than life. But then you kind of just go up to a screen and then you come back and then you move around and then you go up to another screen. Well, it's cute and I'm definitely glad I wrote it. I just don't feel the need to wait another 80 minute, you know, wait time for it. I think 30 to 45 is a good spot. It's very cute. It's nice for families. World Showcase needed something and Epcot could use more rides that are and attractions really that are, uh, you know, based towards kids. But honestly, just not really my speed. Uh, I went on Tron. I've got a VQ for Tron. I would probably say 60 to 90 for that one. I really like the launch, and I like everything indoors. And I really like – I actually enjoyed the bike a lot. I thought I was going to get really claustrophobic, and a lot of people said that it was super uncomfortable. But I found it way more comfortable than I would have thought I would have found it, just because people had been talking about just how tight of a fit it was. And I, I had a lot of room – to roam and I know not everybody has the same experience and everything but I thought I was going to be just stuck in there like in a little little cage but I actually could go back a little bit and like my feet and my legs didn't feel like they were completely stuck I felt completely safe but at the same time it wasn't like you know something was crushing me there's this ride at Six Flags uh, Great America which is my home park called X Flight and that's one of those wing coasters and they have the locking jackets and I thought it was going to be that where you're just kind of stuck and you can't breathe. I had a perfectly pleasant experience on the ride. The, the launch is awesome, and that sensation you get from being on a bike that's going that fast is incredible. Um, it's really short. That's the only issue. It's maybe like 90 seconds, um, which it's really fun. And it, it, a good ride is something that you want to go on again and again. And if you want to, if you want it to be longer, that means it's probably good. Um, and Tron's definitely good, but it just needed like 30 seconds longer, 40. Like it, it should have been like a Haggard style length maybe. Well, that's pretty long. Maybe at least Guardians, where Guardians feels like it definitely is like the perfect amount of time. And then the last one that I went on was Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Re Rewind. And I would wait any amount for that. I ended up waiting actually. Uh, I think it ended up 
being six hours for it because they're still on the VQ, VQ system, which I so sick of the VQ system already. This was my first time actually ever dealing with it, but I was so annoyed because I woke up on my Epcot day and I have, when I tell you I've had nightmares about not being able to go on Cosmic Rewind since I booked this trip, I, like I'm not joking. Like I, I have had nightmares about missing it and just feeling horrible about it. And so I got up like 6.50 or whatever. I actually got up at 6 and I confirmed my party, which was me. And then I got up at 6.55 and I was just hitting refresh, 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 refresh. And for some reason the app doesn't have it where it's like, it will just tell you like 6.59. It won't be like 6.59.22. Even though like the VQ drops at 7. And so like it, it's just really hard to get the exact refresh time. You know, press it and then have it be available. And so it hit 7. I refreshed. It was probably like 7.00.01 or something. I hit refresh and I clicked virtual queue and, and couldn't get on it. Um, couldn't get into the virtual queue. So I literally bought a lightning lane. I like I, – I, didn't want to do that the entire trip. I didn't have to do it the entire trip and bought a lightning lane for ended up being $18.11 to go on at like 10 a.m. in the morning at 10 a.m. Uh, and it was fun. Like, I, I didn't regret, you know, confirming my chances at going on this ride. I've been looking forward to for seven years pretty much. But I just it just feels gross paying for a ride that you know, first to get out of it for free, it's a lottery system. And then, you know, you're also paying how much money to get into Epcot for the day on top of everything you have to pay for like drinks and food and things like that. So it was good. It was a good ride. And I would, if it wasn't virtual queue, I would be happy to wait super, super long. And again, I got, I got the virtual queue at 1 PM. So I got to go on it twice, which, you know, felt a little less gross, at least like, okay, I'm now saying like $10 on each ride. The only issue is the last couple of years, the budget cuts are becoming more and more clear at Disney parks, especially in the States. And I don't know, maybe this isn't a budget cut thing, but the last few big rides that Disney's built, like, you know, rides that they knew they were going to have long waits, like Flight of Passage, and I think Rise of Resistance has this too, uh, they've built bathrooms <laughs> in the line. So, you know, they know that these rides are going to have like two, three, four hour waits, Um you know, if there's not a VQ, if you queue put down or anything, um, you know that that's going to happen. You're going to have a long wait. And so like they at least give you a bathroom option, I guess. And I don't know. It was just so hot in Orlando and I was drinking so much water and I'd already, you know, it's Epcot. So I'm drinking a little bit too. And so, um, you know, you have the bathroom and it just keeps getting worse. It's also just super hot. So another quick aside, it's just so hot to go to Disney it's so not worth it uh, in terms of weather to go to Disney in June. Like, I just can't imagine living in Florida in the summer. And it just, I feel like, you know, they really have to beef up, like, the water and the misting and the fans and everything. Because there were lines that I was just, like, dying at. And Guardians was one of them. So not only did I have to pee throughout Guardians, and they didn't have a bathroom. And the guy just told me that I would have to leave the building, which is just, like, I, you know, I know I know that, like, that's literally probably the only option that he could have given me. But it's like, well, if I leave the building, you guys won't give me another chance at the VQ because I've already used it, right? Um, and my time was passed, so... I don't know, just budget cuts, no bathrooms in these new rides that are going to have super long waits. I waited 70 minutes, I think, because of the ride broke down a couple times. So, and I already, I gone to the bathroom beforehand and I was drinking water. I was trying to stay, you know, hydrated and, you know, not pass out and anything. And, you know, the ride breaks down, it starts getting hot. I start focusing more on my bladder. And then the guy is just like, you have to leave the building. But it's like, so can somebody take me out? to the bathroom and then bring me back in so at least I don't lose my spot in line or uh you know do I do I get another chance at using my can I use my VQ like if I get out of line do I not have a chance to ride this ride I really want to ride again you know it just feels like they don't you know at least they used to be able to be like oh here's a fast pass or whatever if something goes wrong um or if you're inconvenienced or whatever and I'm not saying I you know was going to beg for a fast pass or anything but it's just like you started building bathrooms and your big rides keep building bathrooms guardians should have a big bathroom in it you know, especially at a park like Epcot where people are drinking. I don't know. Um, overall, I had a really fun trip, and it was really cool. I went by myself, and I've always wanted to take a solo vacation, especially at Disney. So I'm glad I did it, but I just hope that this period of Imagineering and corporate budget cuts and everything is just very short in the company's history and that they start caring about the Disney difference again. Um, not, to, not to sound like the Restore the Magic people or the people who hate that Splash is becoming Tiana's, but um, I just wish they treated you better. Uh, you know, and then also too that like not every ride looks like a fucking mall. Guardians, the line is cool in like the very beginning and then like kind of 
right after that you know like the big galaxy thing on the on the top and then there's like this cool exhibit area but then it really just feels like soulless for most of it i know just a lot of like gray hallways and everything um ride's great ride's super fun i've never you know the sensation on that where you're you're like spinning through it and it's a story coaster and all this stuff like it's a sensation that is completely different from even velocicoaster or hagrid's or or tron it's really really cool but it just feels like there were cor- you know, corners cut. And also, just let me go to the bathroom. Like, just let me go. Let me go. I just want to pee. Thanks. All right. That's it. Back to you. This is uh, Past Andrew just wanting to say thank you for watching my tier list. Hope you enjoyed it. And make sure that you like and subscribe. Keep an eye out for new videos. I am diligently working on that every Disney Parks movie reviewed series. So new episodes of that should come out relatively soon and hopefully consistently and all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, anyways, thank you for watching. Mm-hmm.